we as a nation are committed to the full empowerment of persons with disabilities. The signing and ratification by India of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Peoples with Disabilities, which came into effect in May 2008, symbolizes our resolve to move forward on the agenda to provide differently abled citizens of our country with an environment for their full development and equal participation in the life of the nation. The persons with disabilities, equal opportunities, protection of rights, and full participation, Act 1995, is our main legislation dealing with the persons with disabilities. The government is in the process of replacing it with a more comprehensive new legislation in, consult in consonance with United Nations Convention for Rights of the Physically Disabled Persons. I understand that this is a holistic piece of legislation which would entail major responsibilities, not merely on the union government, but also on the state governments, local bodies, and even private service providers. I therefore ask the government to complete the remaining stages of consultation expeditiously and to introduce the legislation in Parliament as early as possible. As policy framework is strengthened, we must reinforce our efforts to have better delivery mechanism for implementation of schemes and programs, including through effective partnerships with the private sector and civil society. Effective delivery can be the only way in which we can see smiles on the faces of those affected by disabilities. I am happy to note that government has created a separate department of Disability Affairs last year. I wish the new department Godspeed and all success. I urge all state governments to have a similar arrangement in order to give more focus to the issues confronting persons with disabilities. I also call upon the concerned union ministries of social justice and empowerment which is a nodal one and doing excellent job in this direction. Women and child development, human resource development, health and family welfare, labor and employment, and others to work in unison to achieve the desired results. Persons with disabilities must be enabled through education to get adequate opportunities for gainful employment and their rightful status in society. While the goal of inclusive and universal education is being pursued under the Sharp Sikh Shaohiyan, there is also a need to ensure that children with special needs have access to education by providing the right kind of teaching learning environment, material in accessible format, and barrier-free educational institutions. There is, therefore, an urgent need to train teachers in adequate numbers to provide education to children with disabilities. We need to remove physical barriers that do not allow persons with disability to have access to various facilities and services. Various assisting devices are needed to enable persons with disabilities to lead their lives <coughs> independence. Similar uh, <coughs> simple aids like hearing devices, limb processes, wheelchairs, braille writing equipment, facilitated mobility and communication, and substantially improve the functional capacity of disabled persons. It is essential to make AIDS 
and computer software and accessories available to all persons with disability at a reasonable cost so that they have equal opportunity for enhancement and actualization of their inherent potential. Given the widespread and growing use of the internet in various aspects of life, it is vital that at least all government and public sector websites are made universally accessible. Economic empowerment of persons with disabilities needs focused attention. Government is mandated to provide reservation in employment to persons with disabilities. All central government, ministries and organizations under their control must take immediate and comprehensive steps to ensure that reservations for this category is effectively implemented in letter and spirit. Backlog of vacancies in all establishments in the government sector should be filled as early as possible. I also request the private sector to employ more and more persons with disabilities in their organizations and establishment and industry. I am happy to note that today we are awarding employers of persons with disabilities. This shows that private sector can also play a commendable role in appreciating their special ability. There is a need to provide training to persons with disabilities so that they can acquire appropriate skills. The government as well as public and private sectors, especially the civil societies, should work hand in hand to improve the skill levels of persons with disabilities, thereby enhancing their employability. I am informed that a large number of the states have not yet appointed full-time independent state commissioners for persons with disabilities through this ombudsman institution is an integral part of the existing <coughs> Persons with Disabilities Act and such a mechanism is also envisaged in the UNCRPD. I urge the state governments to appoint full-time independent state commissioners for persons with disabilities at the earliest possible and to equip them with the wherewithal to function effectively for grievance redressal of the persons with disabilities. For many children, the presence of an impairment leads to lack of participation in activities that are part of a normal childhood. Women with disabilities are doubly disadvantaged on account of their gender as well as disability. Elderly persons with disability in the twilight of their lives are likely to be neglected and exploited. They need special considerations. While addressing the needs of these, those with disabilities, it is important that attention should also be on preventive measures. The possibilities of children in zero to six age group being afflicted by conditions that can lead to disabilities can be reduced by precautionary measures such as immunization at the right age, control of disease and infections, improvement of hygiene, better nutrition, and better access to healthcare. Government Angon body workers should be specially sensitized and trained to identify children with disabilities to facilitate earliest possible intervention. In conclusion, I congratulate the awardees and convey my best wishes to them for the future. My special good wishes for those awardees with disabilities. Your awards makes us all proud as you represent the spirit of hope, so essential for any society to progress. I hope you will inspire many more to come forward and work tirelessly in the cause of disability. Also, our winning institutions have demonstrated dedication and commitment 
and that example will certainly encourage others to come forward to work tirelessly in our effort to make our society more disabled friendly. Let us all on this occasion place to do our best for the empowerment of persons with disabilities. Thank you.